Hi, this is Sandeep Jali and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 280 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a highly complex and complicated case that illustrates the importance of understanding equipment compatibility and specifically the compatibility of various devices through guide extensions. The patient was a woman with a history of breast cancer that was treated with radiation treatment angina despite medical therapy and a right coronary CTO, as well as normal ejection fraction, she was referred for PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. This is the coronary angiogram, the dual injection. There is a heavily calcified right coronary artery, which is not uncommon in patients who had previous radiation treatment. The distal vessel fills by septal and epicardial collaterals. The occlusion seems to be relatively short, and again, the proximal vessel is significantly diseased. So to summarize, what we have is a CTO of the right with a blunt proximal cap, length of occlusion of about 30 millimeters with heavy calcification. Distal vessel is of good size, but also has a severe calcification, and then the distal vessel fills through both septal and epicardial collaterals. Our plan here was to try and degrade. If that failed, go retrograde through septals and leave ADR as the last option because the calcification would make re-entry fairly challenging. We tried with several guide wires undegradely, Fielder XTA, Gaian X2, and Mongo, but we could not make much progress, which is not surprising given the calcium. We then tried to go retrograde and try with the SUO3 guide wire, but uh, despite surfing in multiple septals, we could not make the connection to the posterior descending artery. We then switched uh, with a Sion Black polymer jacketed wire, but once again, the wire kept on exiting from the collateral segment into the cavity, so we could not make the connection to the PDA. So after multiple attempts, we decided to go back to the undergrade approach and this time tried to do undergrade dissection reentry. So we um, advanced the Gladius Mongo guide wire that uh, seems to go into the extra plug space. Um, then uh, the Mongo deviated a little bit into an acute marginal. Very important to do orthogonal projections to confirm that the wire is not going across the course of the vessel. And uh, with repeated attempts, we were able to create this very large rolling knuckle with the Mongo that helped us bypass this acute marginal branch. After doing that, um, we still had difficulty delivering anything through that mid-RCA, so we tried retrograde again, but once again, we were unsuccessful despite trying multiple collaterals. Back to undergrade, this time we're using the Fielder XTA, which seems to create a little better, smaller knuckle that seems to advance along the course of the calcium and the vessel. And we then went to the distal right coronary artery that uh, seemed to be less calcified and tried to re-enter. We did the Stingray balloon with stick and swap, but did not work. And then we repositioned a little bit the Stingray balloon, and once again we used a little stiffer wire, the Horner 14, and this time, and using the ARIO projection that allowed a lot of better visualization, we successfully uh, were able to cross into the posterior descending artery. We wanted to secure the posterior lateral, so we used a dual lumen Sasuke microcatheter, and then we were able to advance uh, a guide wire into the posterior lateral. This is a probing attempt from different vessels. And then we did intravascular ultrasound. So it turns out there was an old stent into the right coronary artery, which was hard to see given all the calcium. We then placed uh, uh, two drug eluting stents. But unfortunately, we had this problem. Now we have a mid right coronary artery perforation. And it's hard to know, we did do the IVUS to size our stents, but this may be related to the heavy calcification. And at this point, we thought that this was not a very large perforation and potentially could use a prolonged balloon inflation with a Ringer balloon. We did have already a trap liner, six friends guide, and we tried to deliver it, but we could not. 
So it turns out if we have a guideliner catheter to deliver a 3.5 millimeter Ringer balloon, we have to have at least a seven friends guide extension. So it is important to be aware of these compatibilities when trying to deliver this balloon, which also can be challenging to deliver as it is relatively bulky. What we did eventually is deliver a PK papyrus through the guide liner. It was a little tricky, but uh, having the second guide wire helped, and we were able to get it down the RCA and then deploy it. That uh, successfully sealed the perforation. We rewired the posterior lateral, and we did the multiple post dilatation with a nice result and T3 flow into the right coronary artery. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is uh, about the difficulties of CTOPCI, which are augmented in a patient with heavy calcium. Specifically for re-entry, we had to try different locations, and eventually we were able to re-enter re -enter using a Horner 14 guide wire. Second, the risk of complications goes way up when there's heavy calcium. Third, it is important to know the compatibilities of various equipment through the guide extension, so up to a 3.0 Ringer balloon can go through the six friends guide liner, but for the 3.5, a seven friends guide liner is needed. And finally, another reason for having difficulty delivery is to having guide wire wrap around the push rod of the guide extension. And that is why using a towel on the side of the guide extension can be important to prevent this from happening. Thank you.